Today, more than 250 million children, or half of the population of children under the age of five, are not reaching their developmental milestones. Without intervention, these children are at risk of having long-term educational and mental health challenges. Critical to early development is children's ability to communicate, understand others, and use words, what we call language development. Parents play an essential role in children's language learning by engaging in responsive behaviors. This means engaging in serve and return interactions, which is consistently responding to what children say, think, and do in a warm and accepting way. However, we know that social disadvantage like poverty and experiences of marginalization creates high stress that can negatively affect how parents and children spend time together. In turn, these differences help explain a gap between the language abilities of privileged and socially disadvantaged children. So how do we close this gap? Parenting programs have the potential to improve children's language skills by teaching parents how to be more responsive. But these programs haven't been broadly evaluated to examine how effective they are and whether they work better for some families. In a Shirk-funded project at York University, our team examined how effective responsive parenting programs are at enhancing children's early language skills by analyzing 33 studies with more than 6,000 families from around the world. We found that teaching parents to be more responsive led to improvements in children's language skills. However, we also found that families with more social disadvantages benefited less. This is how much children benefited from the programs with parents who had a high school education or less, compared to how much children benefited with parents who had a college education or more. So, even though the parenting programs improved early development for at-risk children, they were more effective for more privileged children. This means that without changing their structure, these programs are widening the gap between at-risk children and more privileged children instead of closing it. Our findings have important implications for decision-making in policy and practice focused on how to support young children and how to reduce social disparities in early learning. Responsive parenting programs need to become more accessible, more effective for socially disadvantaged families, and reach a wider audience through public health strategies. More importantly, our findings highlight that to set children up for success, first, families need to be supported through systems and policies that can decrease social disadvantage, reduce strain on parents, and allow parent-child relationships to thrive. That way, children from all backgrounds can get the best start to their lives, which will set them up for lifelong learning, success, and mental wellness.